This video will show you how to you how to work a free body diagram problem where friction is involved on an incline. So a box is sliding down an incline at a constant velocity of exactly two meters per second is shown. What is the coefficient of friction? So I've got my box on the incline 35 degrees. First thing I need to do is figure out what forces are involved in this problem. So it says a coefficient of friction, therefore I must have friction involved in the problem. I've got a box sitting on a surface, so that means I've got to have a normal force because it's on the surface. And because my box is going to feel the pull of gravity on the Earth, that's where we're doing all of our experiments, it's going to feel weight, or mg. So those are the three forces I need to use on my free body diagram. So I'm going to replace the box with a little dot for the body, something nice and simple. And I'll make all my forces come from this dot. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the weight. So weight always points straight down no matter what the incline does, and that's going to be mg. The second thing I'll look at is the normal force, that's perpendicular to the surface. And finally, friction, that's defined as going the opposite direction of motion or the intended motion. In other words, if there wasn't any friction on this incline, this block would slide down the incline. So there's my free body diagram with all the forces set up. Now, the next thing I need to do is set up a coordinate system. So I'm going to choose an X and Y coordinate system that's parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. Those will be my X and Y coordinates. So I've got to make sure all my forces are in this coordinate system. The normal force matches up with the Y just perfectly. Friction matches up in the X plane just perfectly, but mg does not. So what I'm going to do is break up mg into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the incline, in other words, in the x and y direction. So mg would become the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I'll make my right triangle here with the forces going down and over, and that'll be 35 degrees. We discussed why in class that was 35 degrees. So mg is the hypotenuse that makes the adjacent side mg cosine 35 and the opposite side mg sine 35. So now my forces are all broken up into directions that are in the direction of y and the direction of x. In other words, parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. So on to the next step, summing up the forces. So I'll start by summing up the forces in the y direction. In the y direction, that is perpendicular to the incline, there's no acceleration. In other words, this box isn't jumping off the incline or sinking down to the incline and speeding up in the process. Because there's no acceleration, it's all equal to zero. So when I sum up the forces in this direction, what I'm going to say is that all the forces going up off the incline equal all the forces going down into the incline. Or in other words, when I sum up the forces and they equal zero, it's going to say the normal force minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero, because those two forces line up perpendicular to the incline. If I rearrange the equation, I get the normal force is equal to mg cosine 35. Next, summing up the forces in the x direction. In the x direction, in this problem, it says it's moving at a constant velocity that's along the incline. So in the x direction, there's also no acceleration. So no acceleration means no mass times acceleration. So no acceleration means all that's equal to zero. And then what I'm going to do is say all the forces going to the right minus all the forces going left. In other words, all the forces going down the incline minus all the forces going up the incline. So some of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, and that's going to be equal to mg sine 35, because that goes parallel to the incline. Look at the picture minus friction, because that goes parallel to the incline in the opposite direction. So therefore, friction is equal to mg sine 35. Now it's time to start doing some algebra. So I'm asked to find the coefficient of friction, but the problem is I don't have a coefficient in any of my equations. But I do know a formula with it. That's friction. So friction is equal to mu times eta. That's great. So now I've got mu. Now I've got to put an expression in for friction and one for eta. Well, I've got one for friction. That's mg sine 35. That's equal to mu, and I've got an expression for eta. That's mg cosine 35. Those are from my other two equations. So mg sine 35 equals mu times mg cosine 35. So the masses divide out. Gravity divides out. So now sine 35 is equal to mu cosine 35. So mu is equal to sine 35 divided by cosine 35. So mu is equal to tangent 35. Therefore, mu is equal to 0.7 for this uh, coefficient of friction. And that's all I had to do.